Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and at the end of this video, I'm going to show you what I think is an eye-opener. <clears throat> you know, for the last two years while I've been talking to you about XRP and Ripple on this channel, one thing has been very, very obvious, and that is that the Bitcoin people do not want to bring up Ripple or XRP. A lot of the people who are investors in Ripple do not want to say the word Ripple or XRP, including Barry Silbert of the Digital Currency Group. Um, he w does not want to say XRP, does not want to say Ripple. All of these people, they intentionally do not say it. Well, what I'm going to show you, I found at the end of this video, I've got a, a video clip I'm going to show you. It's from a guy who is a, who's been a trader on Wall Street. It's a, you, you see him on uh, CNBC all the time. I'm going to show you a video. And in this video, it's an interview that, that uh, Anthony Pompliano did with this guy. And he, t he lays out how these guys operate. And once you watch this clip, I think it'll be very obvious to you how these guys play the game. I've told you a thousand times on this channel that all the world is a stage. And it is a stage. And you will, I think that it will complete, the picture will be complete in your mind when I get to it. First, let's cover a few things. Uh, Michelle Vandenberg had sent me um, this from XRP Crypto Wolf. The fifth largest bank in the world and Japan's largest financial institution, Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group, is going to issue its Japanese yen pegged stablecoin digital currency, which was initiated in 2015 and will finally launch in the second half of 2020. Speaking of the world being a stage, are you noticing that all of the sudden, almost as if planned, all of these countries are all of a sudden acting like they're really about to do these digital, these central bank digital currencies and issue these things? This has all been a plan. I'm telling you, this is not something that's just, oh, well, this is up in the air. We're just kind of worried about this still. No, these people, have, this, 2020 is not the year of the digital asset for no reason. It's the year of the digital asset, and you're seeing it all come together. We're seeing it come together in the United States from the Digital Dollar Project, the XCFTC, Chris G Giancarlo. We're seeing the, uh, the controller of the currency, Brian Brooks, who came from Coinbase. We're seeing all these guys come out, and they're, they're all of a sudden. I showed you a video yesterday from the guy who's at the CFTC now. We're seeing aggressive moves around the world in, towards digital assets now. And it's almost like a coordinated ballet, if you really pay attention. All right. So next, there was this from XRP Crypto. Well, Ripple's new partner, Currency Cloud, has secured an e-money license from the Netherlands Central Bank, allowing it to continue to operate across the European Union. The license brings faster cross-border payments to more European financial institutions. And then we have this from Michael at VAL Five Links. British bank Standard Chartered, who is a Ripple partner, and also remember, um, Kahina Van Dyke left Ripple and went to Standard Charter, and, and Brad Garlinghouse said that she would be on, on just a node on the network away. Remember that? Well, this uh, Standard Chartered has invested in Met Metico, a crypto custodian focused on, on the institutional market. Wonder why a bank would be getting into the crypto custodian business. Why would they do that? I think we know that why they would do that. Now, this is interesting, folks. This right here is interesting. From XRP Crypto Wolf, R3 CEO David Rudder started a new corporate bond technology venture for a blockchain platform to improve liquidity in the corporate bond market. Uh, the, the new solution aims to improve market liquidity by addressing market inefficiencies as well as weaknesses. Look at this. Remember, R3 is part owned by SBI, which also part owns Ripple. Um, R3 also, remember, remember when this is something a lot of you may not know. R3 and Ripple were in a lawsuit a few, a year or so back, and they settled the lawsuit, okay? But the lawsuit was over a stockpile of XRP 
that R3 was saying they were entitled to. The, the settlement, they settled the lawsuit and the settlement was kept in secret. But if you think that R3 does not sit on a pile of XRP, I have an igloo in Georgia that is still for sale. Even though I looked on in my car yesterday, the temperature was 100 degrees. But this igloo is the finest igloo money can buy. And it's for sale in South Georgia, which is 100 degrees. And it will, it will melt in 24 hours. But it's such a great igloo if you believe that R3 does not sit on a pile. Now, this is relevant, folks. R3 does sit on a pile of XRP. It's relevant to what we're, ta we're showing you right here. David Rutter, enterprise blockchain firm, R3 CEO, has started a corporate bond technology venture, uh, Ledger Edge, as a building platform and ecosystem for secondary trading in the corporate bond market. According to the firm, um, new solution aims to improve market liquidity by addressing market inefficiencies as well as weakness in current solutions. It will shift away from a centralized store of data and avoid data leakage. And then this is a quote from Rudder. The secondary market for corporate bonds is growing and is ripe for evolution, but ex existing platforms are not fit for purpose, said Rudder. Data is monetized by, monetized by platforms and is leaked across fragmented, opaque markets, decreasing as execution quality, da, 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 da. Okay? Let's go down to the bottom of this article. Because the bottom of this article, it says, that's particularly the case in Asia, with multiple groups looking at tokenizing corporate bonds. In Japan, there's Boostry founded by Nomura. Now, remember the other day when I did a video? Yoshitaka Katao, the CEO of SBI Holdings, who sits on Ripple's board, began his career by working for multiple organizations owned by Nomura. Nomura Securities was one of them. They're also, Nomura is an R3 investor. And Nomura Research, MUFG, an R3 investor. I think they're a Ripple partner as well. And then you, it says, um, uh, initiate a security token research consortium with Mitsubishi, NTT, which is also a Ripple partner, right? R3 partner and Accenture, which is an owner in Ripple. I mean, this one paragraph is littered. Santander is partnered with Ripple. This, this paragraph here is littered with ties to Ripple. But we're not finished yet, folks, because this is another article on this. Fixed income pioneer David Rudder launches Ledger Edge. Go down to here. Rudder has assembled an expert team to work with the industry to resolve the issues in the corporate bond market. The team comprises David Nickel, IBM R3. David Nickel, this is his LinkedIn, R3. He was at IBM before that. Now he runs Ledger Edge. Found something, uh, two other things that were interesting about David Nickel. David Nickel, in his interests on LinkedIn, one of his interests is Ripple. I just thought that was interesting. Here's another interesting thing about David Nickel. You remember the video that was put out about Corda Settler, which uses XRP? The, settler, this? the open source Corda app built to help Corda users settle transactions on any rail. Transactions usually refer to an exchange of one asset for another. One leg of the transaction could Remember be this? other parties. They are using a notary service on Corda, and they both have access to nodes in other payment systems. For this demo, XRP is the chosen payments route. Okay, that's the Corda Settler. The first digital asset on Corda Settler was XRP. You'll never guess who it was in that video that was doing the talking. The guy that was speaking there is David Nickel, who is the CEO of Ledger Edge, okay? Now, who else do we have? Um, I'm gonna skip this guy who's got a funny last name, Ian Chicken. I bet he caught a hard time as a kid. Bob Bose, who was San who was with Santander, check this guy out. Let's see if I can find him. Right here. CTO at Ledger Edge. He was with Santander. Um, I don't know, let's see what else. Uh, he was with Nice Euronext. UBS. So this guy, this guy's got uh, quite the resume himself. Well, he also happens to be interested in Ripple. This is on his LinkedIn page where you can go and look at, at what people's interests are. Well, he's interested in Ripple as well. I bet they are. Because if R3 sits on a pile, you better believe these guys are plugged into all that. Then there's this from XRP Crypto Wolf. R3 partnered with Singapore FinTech Association to fast track startups in Singapore's blockchain ecosystem. 
The strategic partnership between SG Fintech and Inside R3 enables startups in SFA's network with direct access to R3's Corda to build on it. All right, and then Brandon at Stu7 Padasso sent me this. Uh, several things. I haven't talked about the economy too much lately, but I want to hit this because just look at the, I'm just going to click on these and just illustrate to you how scary what's coming is and how crazy these times we live in are. This is a Peter Schiff tweet. The U.S. dollar crisis is much closer than people think. When it hits, it's game over. No more, that, no more can kicking. The piper must be paid. And then there's this. Lockdown 2.0 will ensure the U.S. remains in an economic depression through the 2020 election. You have to wonder if that's the whole point, right? And then there's this. Central banks buy another 40 tons of gold in May. These central banks know what's coming, folks. They know what's coming. And what I think is coming is a roll into a new financial system. And I think gold is going to play a part. And I think digital assets are going to play a tremendous part. Specifically XRP, the greatest digital asset ever created. Now, just two more things I wanted to show you. I googled just for, just for not giggles, but just to illustrate how scary things are out there. I just typed in layoffs on Google and looked at the news. Look at all these things. Verizon alternative let retaining 20,000. Thousands of United Airlines employees face October layoffs. Textron announces further layoffs. Dozens of Stanford employees lose jobs. Nearly 100 employees laid off at Connecticut Manufacturing Company. Um, Southwest threatens first ever layoffs if, if passenger traffic doesn't triple. Layoffs confirmed at Casino Star Casino, Kansas Star Casino. Layoffs of Clark County's alternative five, da 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 on and on and on. And before I leave layoffs, folks, if you're, if you're one of these people who's lost your job and you've got a old 401k, go check out I Trust Capital. Uh, you can look in the description of my video. You can roll your 401k and other retirement plans into an I Trust Capital IRA. Um, and I've got a one month free coupon code in the description of my videos. That's what I did is open the Roth IRA there. Um, and then I also went on Google and I, and I Googled billion losses. Well, these are all the companies that are losing billions right now. And it's not, it's not one or two. It's a lot. JP Morgan braces for loan losses as trading props up uh, profit um, sets aside $10 billion to cover coronavirus loan losses. Um, banks stockpile billions as they prepare for things to get worse, battered by losses. Hospital sinks, seeks $450 million from the state. State forecasts $121 billion two-year tax revenue. Uh, Delta Airlines reports two-quarter loss of $5.7 billion. Folks, companies don't recover from this kind of stuff without bailouts. And we don't have any more money to bail out, folks, unless they're, unless they're trying to bankrupt the United States, which is a very distinct possibility. Now... It's time for me to show you. Now, look, rem remember at the beginning of this video, I told you for years now, over two years, we have seen head fakes. Uh, you remember when I showed you the Tika Tawara video on Glenn Beck, where he where he's showing what what JP Morgan was. They were buying Bitcoin while they were bashing Bitcoin. That's how these people operate. It's not a coincidence that none of these people will talk about XRP. It's the one digital asset they will not name, and it includes him. He won't name it either. He didn't name it in this video. I looked. They won't name, but what, listen to what he says about how Wall Street does things. This is a trader. This is a guy that's been on CNBC. He's been being interviewed by Anthony Pompliano. Listen to what he says. Folks doing that. I mean, I got to believe Don Paulson, who is such a proponent of gold and, you know, famously caught the uh, uh, financial crisis and got on the right side of that. And then he got into gold. And since then, he's kind of, eh, you know, sort of he said, now I'm shutting it down. I'm just going to run my family office. I guarantee you he gets into Bitcoin if he isn't already. But I think a lot of them will want to keep it quiet as they're getting in because, you know, they'll, they'll run it. Uh, I don't mean that they'll... Uh, run it in, in terms of how it operates. I mean, they'll push the price um, too far, too fast. 
So for the, the exact same guys that know that you don't want Goldman knowing that you're buying, you know, FireEye or Uber or Microsoft because they'll run it ahead of you, um, those same guys are sitting there thinking, I really like this play in Bitcoin here, but uh, I'm not going to say a lot about it until I got enough of this stuff because, you know, we both know that uh, blocks of it stand out. I want you to watch this closely because you're going to see Pompliano acknowledge what he's talking about too. They both know how this game works. And this has been a game all the world is a stage, folks. Watch, because he, he chimes in. You'll see the look on Pompliano's face. He knows what the game is. Um, and so they've got to stay under the radar with these accumulations. Um, and forever I had pomp guys coming to me. Um, two years ago, I, I probably had five to ten calls a week from people telling me, oh, I want to buy $200 million in Bitcoin. And I'd say, no, you don't. And they'd say, oh, yeah, yeah I do. I, I'll give you proof of funds and all that. And as soon as I'd ask for it, then they didn't have it. You know, same old crap. And it was when Bitcoin was falling from 18 on down to 35 or 3,200, whatever. Um, and it seemed like more than anything, they were trying to hold the price level by telling people like me that they had it to buy so I would go to people and then these, you know, that had large quantities and these people would say, okay, give me proof of funds. I'll do 50 million or I'll do a hundred million with them and blah, blah, blah. And these were at four and $5,000 per Bitcoin USD to Bitcoin. And I did, I think two transactions out of at least a hundred and most of them were complete BS. And I think they were just trying to, you know, manipulate the market or whatever. But the same is true when it's, you know, stabilized and hanging near 10,000 now that people are probably not wanting to see it jump to 12 and 15 and 20 again too fast because they're going to try to accumulate it at a level. I think that's exactly what's happening. Um, you, you, he knows. Uh, you understand that the people who, uh, we want to buy a lot. Don't want the price to go up, right? Oh, um, yeah. and, and, uh, and I think that's what we're seeing. Before I wrap up, I always ask uh, people the same two. Do you understand how this game works, folks? It's just as simple as sh what Shakespeare said. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages. <laughs> I want to finish this video by reminding you, you can get 20% off the Ledger Nano X. They're doing this um, coin league uh, for the summer. So there's a link in the description of all my videos. You can click on it and go get 20% off. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that all the world is a stage. And if there was ever a play going on, it has to do with XRP and digital assets. Thanks for listening.